Hello, I'm Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. This week, we're talking about meal frequency and whether eating six times a day instead of three will help you lose more weight or burn more fat. The future is coming. Make it brighter with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy to turn your idea into a unique website. Showcase your work, your blog, or publish your content, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. And there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code DIVA and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. A lot of people believe that eating more frequently boosts your metabolism. I debunked this in the first year of the Nutrition Diva podcast, which was, can you believe it, 10 years ago. The research that I reviewed back in 2008 for my episode on metabolism myths simply did not support the notion that you could burn more calories by dividing your daily intake into smaller, more frequent meals. But our understanding of human nutrition is constantly evolving, and it's always worth revisiting these stances in light of newer evidence. In his book, The Abs Diet, David Zinchenko claims that eating six meals a day will help you reveal that six-pack that you'd like to flaunt. Uh, Due to inflation, we do now strive for an eight-pack, but back then an abdominal six-pack was considered sufficient. You have to eat more if you want to lose more, he writes in the book, and there's science to support the fact that more meals work. And then he goes on to cite two specific studies to prove that eating more frequently will help you burn more fat. One of these studies, which is from the year 2000, involved nationally ranked 15-year-old gymnasts and 26-year-old runners, all of whom were female. The study didn't actually look at how often the women ate. Instead, it was looking at the difference between calories consumed and calories burned on an hourly basis throughout the day. And they found that the athletes who replaced the calories they burned more quickly had less body fat than those who waited longer. Now remember, these were world-class athletes. Their body fat percentages were all very low to begin with. So the change in body fat was the difference between very low and very, very low. What this study really shows is that when you're training at the level of a world-class athlete, you don't want to delay your post-workout recovery meals. I'm not really sure, though, how relevant this is to Zinchenko's audience. The other study he cites, which is from 1996, involved 12 boxers who were put on extremely low-calorie diets, just 1,200 calories a day, for two weeks. Boxers will often crash diet before events in order to qualify for certain weight classes. In this study, six of these boxers divided those 1,200 calories into just two meals, and the other six ate the same number of calories but divided into six meals. Both groups lost a bunch of weight, and not surprisingly, they also lost a significant amount of lean muscle. That's what happens when you lose weight too quickly. But the loss of muscle was a bit less in the group who ate more frequently. So what this study really shows is that when you are crash dieting, you'll lose less muscle if you eat more frequently. But if your goal is a six pack or any multiple thereof, you don't want to be losing muscle. You want to be losing fat. So crash dieting is not recommended. Again, I'm not sure this study is all that relevant either to the claim or to the audience. But these are not the only studies out there that look at the relationship between meal frequency and weight loss or body composition. And some of the other studies that I found might be a bit more applicable to you and me and to most of the people who are reading the abs diet. Before I get into those studies, let me thank our other sponsor, Third Love. Third Love knows that when it comes to bra shopping, fit is key. They're the only lingerie brand that offers bras in sizes AA through G. Third Love uses thousands of real women's measurements. They come in 60 sizes, including half cup sizes, which nobody else does. Right now, you can get 15% off your first order. To find that perfect bra for you, just answer a few simple questions from their Fit Finder quiz. Third Love's super smoothing memory foam means that their bras fit and feel great. It's so comfortable, you might forget you're wearing it. And if you don't agree, returns and exchanges are easy and free. 
This year, make the change that will change the way you think about bras. Go to thirdlove.com slash diva to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash diva. Now let's take a look at some of that other research that I uncovered. In 2017, researchers analyzed data on more than 50,000 adults, both men and women. This was data from the Adventist Health Study, and it involves a population that tends to be a little healthier than average, but they're not elite athletes. These subjects are also what we call free living. That means that their meals are not being provided by researchers and they're not living in a research lab. They're living in their homes, working at their jobs, cooking their own food, raising their families, and so on. Kind of like you and me. And the researchers found that the people who ate more than three times a day weighed more than those who ate less frequently. This isn't that surprising because other research has shown that those who eat the most frequently also tend to consume the most calories. Unfortunately, when people embrace this idea of eating six small meals a day, all too often they overlook the small part of the equation. We can also find some studies which seem to support the idea that eating more frequently might help with weight loss. For example, eating more frequently has been shown to improve appetite control, and that might help people avoid overeating. But that's not the same thing as revving up your fat-burning metabolism. It's just a way of managing your behavior. Here's the thing about nutrition research, especially the kind that involves humans. No matter what question you're asking, there are usually multiple studies with conflicting results. And that means that if you start with a certain conviction or point of view, you can almost always find at least one study to back you up. You can stop as soon as you find a study that says what you want it to, or you can look at all the studies and see where the consensus lies. In 2011, the International Society of Sports Nutrition published a position paper in which they reviewed all of the relevant research on this question of meal frequency. They agreed that for elite athletes who are on restricted calorie diets, eating more frequently can help preserve muscle mass. However, they also concluded that more frequent meals will not affect body composition in more sedentary populations, and that increasing meal frequency is not going to help anyone burn more calories. And then a few years later, in 2014, Professor Ashima Kant looked at 16 different studies on meal frequency, and she published her analysis in the journal Advances in Nutrition, and here's what she had to say. Frequent eating is associated with higher energy intake, and yet beliefs about the possible beneficial effect of higher eating frequency for managing body weight persist. Overall, the findings suggest that beliefs about the role of higher eating frequency in adult weight management are not supported by the evidence. Over the last 10 years and longer, I've taken a lot of stances on various aspects of nutrition, informed by whatever research was available at that time. And sometimes newer research prompts me to change my position. But in this case, I'm sticking with what I said 10 years ago. If eating smaller, more frequent meals helps you manage your appetite better and allows you to make better choices, go for it. But eating more frequently in and of itself is unlikely to have a measurable effect on your metabolism or on your abdominal fat. And if you do favor more frequent meals, be careful that eating more frequently doesn't lead you to eat more than you need. You'll find a transcript of today's show along with links to all of those research studies that I mentioned at nutritiondiva.quickanddirtytips.com. And I'd love to hear what you have to say about whether or not eating more frequently helps you eat healthier. Come find me on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. And if you have nutrition questions, you can post them for me there or catch one of my live Q&A sessions. They happen on Friday afternoons via Facebook Live. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great week and remember to eat something good for me. 